Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to do the second part of the multi-part series on creating an ASP.NET Web API with ASP.NET Core and Visual Studio 2017. So we have seen in the first part that you know how we created the application and retrieve the data with the HTTP GET requests. If you have not seen that, you know, look at my uh, card on the YouTube video and get back to the first part and before moving on to this. So in this part, we are going to implement the rest of the CRUD, which is create, update and delete operations. And also it will call the web API with jQuery. And the overview of this API is following. We have seen the get requests earlier. So it will only show the post, put and delete. So post is to create a new item, put is updating an existing item and delete is deleting an item. So let's get back to the Visual Studio application that we have built in the last lecture. In this one, I'm going to implement the create. So I'll put a create method which is un in the same controller, to do controller. And at the bottom, I will just paste this create method, which returns an I action result. Now this met created at root method, it returns a 201 response. Then HTTP 201 is the standard response for an HTTP post method that creates a new resource on the server. So, and it also adds a location header to the response. The location header specifies the URI of the newly created to do item. And it uses the get to do named route to create the URL. Now the get to do named route is defined in the get by ID that we have seen in the earlier tutorial. So name is get to do. That's the get to do route name. Now this time we are going to use um, we'll start the application and start Postman. And I'll show you the usage of Postman as a client to make these HTTP requests. So application is loaded. I will load the Postman. And uh, Let me copy the URL of this. So this one, get back to the postman, enter the request URL, and I'll select raw, the checkbox, and in the text, I'll click on application slash JSON, and I'll copy a part in the post body of the request and click on send. So it is saying unexpected character encountered with passing the value. Okay, so I think I'll have to name it to do. to do and then click on send. Yeah, this time it got, got some, gets me the response back. Um, now, let me click the headers tab and it gets me the location. This is the location URI. So next we'll go to the update method, end of the create method. What we'll do is I'll have to keep it running and then create the update method that follows as follows. That's my update method. Now update is similar to create, 
except it uses HTTP put. The response is 204 or no content. According to the HTTP specification, a put request requires the client to send the entire updated entity, not just the patches or deltas. To support partial updates, you have to use HTTP patch verb. Now, I will again use Postman to update the to-do items name to walkcat. So, walkdoc from walkdoc, I'll make it walkcat. And click on the send. So you get the response walkcat is complete true. Next is the delete. So getting back to the application, I'll put up a delete method. Again, build it. And I will use the postman to again delete the to-do item. I'll put up a delete request here. Send it. So my body doesn't have any response. It's empty. Next, this part is finished. So we'll call the web API with jQuery. So in this part, an HTML page is added that uses jQuery to call the web API. And uh, we'll have to configure the project to serve static files and to enable default file mapping. Now, this is accomplished by making some change on the startup.configure. So I've got this startup.cs, public void configure, and I'll have to add two lines, which I have copied from my notepad and paste it over here. And I'll add an HTML file, index.html, to the www root directory. So click on add new item general let's see where is the HTML file uh, uh, where is HTML file JavaScript JavaScript content HTML page okay so index.html So my www root has got index.html file and I'll have copied it from my clipad, uh, notepad and then paste it over the existing code. This is all pasted code. And I'll have to add a JavaScript file which is site.js. So add uh, new item again script JavaScript file so this is going to be named as site dot js again paste the code already copied to my clipboard and now I'll have to make a change to the ASP.NET Core project's launch setting to test the HTML page locally. So first of all, I'll copy, I'll save everything. Again, do a build, Control Shift and B as a shortcut key. And then launch settings dot JSON in the properties directory of the project. Um, Launch settings.js. Uh, where is launch? 
settings judges uh, okay here so I've opened the launch settings.json file in the properties directory remove the launch URL property launch URL property okay here it is I'm going to remove this to force the app to open at the index.html the project's default file now there are several ways to get jQuery in the preceding snippet the library is loaded from a CDN this sample is a complete card example of calling the API with jQuery there are additional features in this sample to make the experience richer so the jQuery Ajax function sends an Ajax request to the API which returns JSON representing an object or an array. This function can handle all forms of HTTP interaction, sending an HTTP request to the specified URL. Get is used as the type. The success callback function is invoked if the request succeeds. So in this site.js, it's all now there. Now, everything is already written and I'll just explain. To get a list of to-do items, send an HTTP get request slash API slash to-do. So, what you will do, I'll again start the application. Slash API slash to-do. So I got this response back. Now to add a to-do item, send an HTTP POST request to API to-do. Uh, which I have already done on the postman. The request body should contain a to-do object. The Ajax function is using POST to call the API. For POST input request, the request body represents the data sent to the API. The API is expecting a JSON request body. The accepts and content time options are set to application slash JSON to classify the media type being received and sent respectively. The data is converted to JSON object using JSON.stringify. When API returns successful status code, the get data function is invoked to update the HTML table. And updating a to-do item is very similar to adding one since both rely on a request body. The only real difference between the two is in this case the URL changes to add the unique identificate, identifier of the item and the type is put. And deleting a to-do item is accomplished by setting the type on the Ajax call. Hi, finally test, let's test the web API using the jQuery that we have added and the JavaScript file with the HTML. So I'll run the application. So I've got this nice uh, interface to do crud and add in if I click on add it will add a new to do so now the, there are two to do's if I click another add then three to do's and four to do's and then if I wish to delete one it will delete that item if I wish to edit something I can edit change to do and click on edit so it has now changed and I can edit this one renamed something like that click on edit it's now renamed if I make it complete can't somehow 
click this but that's all right I can again edit it renamed again so it is again and it could be deleted that's it so that complements my second part and that is the conclusion and if you have viewed you have liked it you please put your likes put your comments and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much